um, with the cornice modillions, which is um, filling the nail holes with just straight epoxy. And it takes a few go-arounds before it starts to set at the top, but I figure while I have the opportunity to um, try to get the epoxy in there, then hopefully it will soak into the end grain. Um, you know, it'll soak into the grain and uh, and help shore this up. You know, being a couple hundred years old, you're really fighting with time. And I know you've explained to me that rot isn't a linear progression, so anything I can do to to try to plasticize the wood, I guess. Would that be your take as well? I believe so. Okay. It's funny to see something like those decorative modillions which are tucked up underneath the material, the hood. It's funny to see them show signs of deterioration. Yeah, well, the only areas that they showed signs of deterioration was wherever there was contact right up against them because they're able to breathe. Um, and around the nails as well, I guess that must have to do with... Sweating? Yeah, with the, the metal sweating? I believe so. Okay. I believe so. So that's a pretty cute technique with the syringe. Is that really working as well as it looks? It's working really well, yeah. Again, because um, because of the quality of the wood inside of the nail hole, it is taking three or four passes with it. Because by the time I make my way to the end, then the first one shows no signs of epoxy inside of it. But wow. with, the, with the last ones that I did, I think it was four times around, and then the epoxy was on the surface. Is that filled epoxy? This is just straight epoxy, not just, filled. Okay. So that's so his... I, I tried using a minor filled epoxy, just a little bit of filler with the syringe, but even cutting it all the way off, there's just not enough. Um, it's uh, not viscous enough. Or it's too viscous. To combat the viscosity, you'd have to have a, a syringe that could achieve a higher pressure. Yeah. Well, on the other hand, if you had a lot of filler in that, it wouldn't do any soaking in at all. That's my experience with the epoxy. Yeah, and that's that's why I'm using it, using it straight. I could just patch over it, but then you have a void in there. You don't know what's going to happen in that void. Understood. How far are you away from uh, putting those little medallions back in? I can pretty much do it any time. Um, I would like to achieve getting the fluted ceiling on before I start working on the more detailed work. You also talked about priming the backboard that those go up against? Um, yes. You haven't, you still haven't done that? I haven't done that yet. Um, do you think back priming I'm, I don't think I'm going to prime inside of the whole structure, but I, I don't know. I mean, the primer I use is a high acrylic, supposedly very breathable, but still on the fence as to whether I have to prime something that, um, if well maintained, and if it's put on a good paint schedule, should not have any problems. You know, most of the problems of this was that somebody didn't replace the roof hundred years ago or 50 years ago or whenever whenever it was and know. any amount of back priming probably wouldn't have solved that problem yeah I've heard that amateur boat builders um, try to seal all of their pieces of wood on all sides um, but I don't imagine that this unlike most amateurs boats is going to end up completely submersed in water I would think not no let's hope that well let's see where let's see how climate change affects that part of Portsmouth not to get um, I that's... saw something about Strawberry Bank come up in my news feed that uh, Strawberry Bank is having to look at longer term plans as to what to do um, if we continue to get storms with larger storm surges and if the sea levels continue to rise, you know, even a centimeter uh, sea level rise really has uh, great impacts on the shoreline when you have big storms coming through. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, I know that they're talking as this, someone is talking about the Prescott Park uh, trustees are talking about uh, 
doing some remedial work to I think the Shaw warehouse and actually put it on a new higher foundation along with some uh, berming uh, and, and, and adjusting the landscape around there to uh, protect it against a high storm surges. Um, is the Shaw warehouse the one that's cantilevered a bit over the I, water I and it has that angle? I believe that's of? the Sheaf warehouse, but Sheaf. the Shaw warehouse is directly behind it. Okay. The Sheaf warehouse didn't start its life there. It started, it was very nearby, but not quite there um, where it is today. That's why if you notice it's on a poured concrete foundation. Yeah. Um, the Shaw warehouse, to my knowledge, is still where it was constructed. Oh, okay. And which makes me kind of reticent to get on board with moving it. Yeah. Because uh, buildings on their original foundations, to me, have much more uh, archaeological value than buildings that have been relocated. Okay. Now the sheaf, sheaf warehouse, mm. um, that has a ridge that overhangs the water. It's got a ridge yes. that comes out and then cuts back in. Do they have a uh, hoist? Hoist. One has to assume that there was uh, some sort of a hoist or a davit or something, because okay. just having an overhang so that the stevedores unloading a gondola wouldn't get wet in the rain seems like, well, it just doesn't seem like anybody would actually ever do that. Sounds like a lot of worker protection for the era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to guess that there was some sort of hoist, and it was roofed over because, let's face it, uh, a timber hoist system wouldn't last very long if it was left in the weather. Yep. It's funny, there aren't any signs of any other of, of those, but most of that kind of work was done from davits, which are, you know, easily removed, easily moved around, and um, are, you know, largely missing. Um, um, a davit would be a <sighs> self-supporting... Uh, uh, imagine, imagine a big pole sunk deeply into the ground with a couple of guy ropes yep. from the top down to some anchorages, okay. and then a boom attached to that. Sure, and that's that was, something they could move from one place to another pretty well, handily. Well, you know, a crew of guys could take one down and erect it in another location in a week, okay. you know? Yeah. Uh, it's, so if you moved your warehouse or built a new dock or whatever that might be you you uh you built a new you know davit and, and uh, boom system okay there was nothing precious about them and they were left to the weather and probably probably would never move maybe they, they were probably just cut down and hauled away and a new one built it's just a you know just a pole you're losing track of what you're doing. No, I'm, I'm checking. Most of these are holding the epoxy. Um, a few of the larger holes um, that were showing more signs of degradation of the wood around it is still soaking the epoxy in pretty well. Um, I'm not planning, just like with the other one, I'm not planning on filling this with a compound and fairing it out. That's always going to be a dimple. Uh, I feel okay about that. It's showing where the original nail hole was and it's it's 12 feet up so I don't think the customer wants to pay me to fix every every dimple on the whole project. Well that's good news. Yeah. Um, I, uh, so uh, we'll leave you to your merriment. Uh, later maybe you could give us a, a bit of a tour as to where the rest of the bonnet stands at this sure. point. Okay, love to.